Yep. It's awesome. Yes, that is the pool. It's a complete mess. That's what I'm going to be doing all freaking weekend is uh, cleaning that thing. That's exciting. Ah. Eric Lawrence, Marsh Outdoors, Austin's Outdoors, Taken Boy Outdoors. That's a lot of outdoors. Maxis Outfitters, AP Custom Calls, Shane Miller, Nate Colm, Virginia Bassin 01. I want to thank each and every one of you guys for subscribing. These are subscribers just in the last week. If you want to be shouted out, you know what to do. Today, we are going to be talking about why do ducks flare. And I'm going to give you some tips. Some of them you might know, some of them you might not, depending on your skill level in this whole waterfowl game. But I'm going to give you some tips that you can try out if the birds are flaring in the morning or at the beginning of the hunt, whether it be morning or afternoon. This is going to be primarily over water. Some things that you can do to help make them birds decoy a little bit better. First off, I want to uh, ask you guys, drop a comment down below and let me know some of your guys' questions or concerns. Some good, legitimate waterfowl questions that I could maybe do some videos on. Uh, it seems like every time I've asked for your guys' feedback like that, like shells or ammo or some of the recent videos, you guys reply really well and I really appreciate all your guys' feedback. It is freaking awesome. So let me know down low. So we're sitting there hunting and the ducks are flaring. What are they doing? Why are they flaring? They're looking, they're passing, they're circling twice, but they're not committing. They're, you know, they're circling you twice and they're out. Uh, first thing I always look for is do we have motion in them decoys? If there's no motion, no, little to no wind, first thing you do is pull out the old jerk cord, the old jerk rig, baby. There has been many of my hunts where we pull out a jerk rig or we find a bunch of stones to start throwing in the pond uh, so it isn't so glassy that that has literally just switched things around and the whole hunt is completely different there on out. So if you're hunting over water, geese or duck, I don't care, take a jerk rig with you every time just in case. The second thing that's most important to to birds flaring is uh, when that st sun starts peeking out and and you know you've, you've tried a few things and you're like what the heck if when once the sun comes up in the east you know it don't come up in the west or anything but make sure your face isn't exposed make sure you're not exposed that is it, with ducks it seems like it, it's very more common to happen with ducks they, they see you a, they pinpoint you a lot better than geese if you have some beginner waterfowlers with you that you're taking out, a few times kind of watch and make sure they're not moving a lot. Uh, a lot of times with beginner hunters, especially with waterfowl, you know, you're waiting patiently and then you get them ducks and geese that come in and they start moving a lot. So if you see them moving a lot, just know it's not their fault. They're not meaning to, but you, let, you need to let them be aware of what they're doing and they got to quit it. Back to the uh, exposing your face in the sun. I'm not telling you to go buy some face paint and fa paint your face all up like a dang clown or anything or like you're in the military. But what I'm saying is when they're coming in, don't look at, directly at them. It, I usually wear a hat or something over. So if you do wear a hat, you can pull it down low and you can use it. It'll, it'll cast that shadow on your face. So uh, always don't point your face directly at the bird they will see that white skin or black skin or Asian skin or whatever you are uh, they'll, they'll see that and it'll, it'll reflect the sunlight pretty bad the third tip I can give hunting over water a lot of times you're gonna be hunting in timber or you're gonna be hunting uh, in a lot of trees trees around you maybe you're in the river or a small pond um, when the birds aren't there or when they're there, if you if you notice that your calling is echoing, you're calling too loud. Echoes, echoes are bad when it comes to water and trees. So if you hear an echo, you got to tone it down, especially when the birds 
are coming you know anywhere around the decoys you got to tone it down and uh, the comeback call and all those things you know you can squawk on them to get their attention but once they're they've pinpointed your spread and they're coming in you got to tone it down if you're in trees it's just one of them things to add to all that it seems like a lot of duck hunts we will progressively back off calling and get quieter you know less of us will actually be calling maybe only one or a couple of us it seems like a lot of mornings will start off a lot of us squawking and carrying on and then we'll start backing it off as the hunt uh, progresses throughout the morning or evening and it seems like that usually works and it, it's usually the case but first off I'm going to tell you you need to go learn your calling techniques if you don't and Josh Kansas Fisherman did a great series of videos of how to blow a duck call and he goes through the feeder the comeback the quack all of them uh, go check that out on his channel Fourth tip would be uh, it's okay to adjust your duck spread a few times. You know, if that wind switches up, you should be changing it right off the bat. And to add the spreads, uh, I really do believe in mojos, whether it be pond, you know, open water, river, and field duck hunting. I have faith in the mojo. We use them a bunch. Uh, rarely have we ever had to pull them out of the spread, but uh, I'm telling you what, get used to sitting a mojo, sit it into the, facing into the wind like just like you would your spread, and uh, position it a little bit. Uh, we like to, well, let me think. Position it close to your landing hole, not directly in it, but like it's approaching your your actual hole that the birds you're expecting to land would be landing in so a uh, few tips there above all these tips the number one thing I always stress it doesn't matter if it's water hunting field hunting is motion in your decoys if the water is glass and it's not moving it's not gonna be good you have to have some motion on the water ducks just don't sit on glass and the water just don't move you know it's got to be moving, people, so get your water moving, use your jerk rigs, get the little butt feeder spitter ducks, get a mojo, get the circling robo duck deal. I don't even know what it's called, but any of that stuff is going to help. If you don't have any of that, go find some dirt clods, go find some rocks, pile them up next to you, and chuck them suckers in there. Uh to help with motion you know when the birds are coming in when they spot when you know they spotted your spread start chucking some rocks in there I know that sounds hillbilly as hell but guess what I've done it we've done it a bunch and it works these are just my two cents you know what I live by and I, and I figured that my tips would would be good to you that's why I'm sharing them with you and so I hope you enjoy them a lot of you are avid waterfowlers like myself so if you guys have any of them good questions, concerns, or you can add any good information to anything that I've said here, please drop it below like I said. I get so much good information from you guys, and I really do appreciate, appreciate each and every comment that you guys leave down there. On the next Waterfowl Friday video, I think I'm going to do geese over fields and some of the reasons why they flare and you have to adjust and what to adjust because field geese is a lot different from ducks on water so uh, there, there's a lot of different variables there so let me know if you guys want to see that or not but go follow me on social media I primarily just concentrate on Instagram it is right here go check that out go follow me I might follow you back I follow a lot of people back so uh, and I comment on everything all, all the comments down below comments on Instagram DMs uh, right now I'm actually I have been doing subscriber photos uh, on featuring them and tagging you in those photos on my Instagram so if you want to get in that uh, DM me your photo on Instagram remember right here and if you look at my page I've been featuring the subscribers it's awesome it, uh, I love it I love giving you giving back to you guys and uh, as if I don't already give the video for free because 
I don't make any money off of this, so, you know. I thank you guys for watching. Come back, y'all. We'll see you on another one. Woo!